Hey everyone, um, welcome to our live coding lab. Today uh, we'll be working on kind of building what we did last week with our uh, MySQL and Rockset integration. Last week we kind of just went over what the integration looks like and how to get how to get set up uh, if you don't have a MySQL database installed, like uh, created on Amazon um, RDS or AWS RDS, and then we created the integration on Rockset, and then we just did a simple kind of insert into create table and just wrote directly to MySQL and just to show kind of what this whole flow looks like. Uh, today we'll be building on what we did last week where we'll be uploading data, uh, uploading Airbnb data to, uh, to MySQL and then using Rockset to write um, analytical queries. And then also at the end, we'll show you, I'm gonna show you how you can do field mappings on uh, once your data is getting ingested, so you can transform fields as they're getting ingested so you don't have to kind of write it in the console. So if you're not familiar with Rockset, Rockset is a real-time indexing database built for the cloud, uh, and it's used as an external uh, indexing layer on top of your sources. And for this example, uh, it will be an external layer, external indexing, we'll do external indexing on MySQL. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I uh, kind of was trying to find some data sets, you know, like finding data sets can be kind of really challenging and finding like the right data set that you want to work with and stuff. A lot of times the data set is incomplete. There are a lot of empty fields or it's just not a lot of data to work with or different types of data to kind of really make it interesting. So I kind of was on a hunt for data and I don't want to spend like, you know, four hours looking for on, on live Twitch on for the right uh, kind of data set to use. So I kind of found this on SF Airbnb listing. It's from data.world. And as I was looking through the data, it kind of seemed pretty good to work with. There's like a lot to work with, with like the different fields and stuff. Um, and so I thought this would be good with, I never worked with this data set before, so I'm not sure like what we'll come up with, but you know, this is, uh, this will be something that looked really good to kind of take a stab at and see what we can come up with. So when looking through this data, it looks like there's already an ID created here. Um, we can potentially use this as the primary key when we create our MySQL table. And there's also a lot of fields listed here. I think they show like some of the fields over here, but if we, yeah, this is, it looks like this is around 34 megabytes. Um, yeah, and it says displaying 50 out of 107, 107 column names. And there's about 7,500 rows in there. So if we go through this, when we're creating, um, let's say we wanted to kind of upload this on MySQL, we kind of need to know what the different fields are uh, and like their data type, I guess. So we can, you know, create the table with the right um, parameters. So looking at this, like looking at this, like listing URL looks like it could be a string and it's, it says URL, type URL. Um, I think this was kind of, this is kind of confusing because usually when it says type, I expect like a data type. And so we have to make sure that we're working, we're, we know what data we're getting in um, when we download this as a uh, CSV and then we can create the table on MySQL. So if you go, well, I'm gonna put a pause here. I'm gonna go back to MySQL really quick. If we look under RDS, let's see, I'm just looking over the database we created last week on our live Twitch session. Oh, it's just loading. Sometimes Amazon can take a little bit to load. We created the MySQL Twitch instance, and that was from last week. Um, and then we have our endpoint that we can connect to and stuff. So we're going to be using this uh, database that we created. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another table um, in this database that will upload um, Airbnb data. So going back to the data now, um, we have last scraped. It says it's a date type and name. And, and you know, there's all these things, right? But as I was looking through this, what made me kind of look, what came me kind of need to, made me want to like look through the CSV to see the right data type is when it says something, I think there was something with price. 
obviously there's no such thing as a type URL, but also going through this, let's go to view data set over here. Um, and I can put this on the chat too that we're kind of looking through this data set. Um, there's a, yeah, there's no, no data host name since it looks like, like we might be working with a lot of strings. Cause even when I was looking through this earlier, um, there was something about price, I think. Um, yeah, price. It says price is, uh, like a decimal. And so I automatically thought of like my SQL. And then if you look at it, there's like the dollar sign and stuff. So I, I really do think we're working with, uh, with, uh, different types of strings or string types. Um, so we can go ahead and kind of, you know, when you're working with data sets and you're getting a CSV, make sure like you know what the data type you're working with um, and what it kind of looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead, we can just kind of download this. Um, and we can download this over here. Um, no thanks. And I think this goes into my downloads folder. And um, this is called SF Airbnb.csv. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm just going to rename it really quick just so it's, um, there's no spaces because I hate that. And then I'm gonna, just going to move it to my desktop so it's just easier to work with. Oh, actually, what am I doing? Um, called it SF Airbnb. Oh, did it not change it? Oh, no. Actually, let me see what happened. Uh, let me go ahead and just move that. I'm not sure if I renamed it or not. I should have renamed it. Let's organize this by the added downloads. Oh, did it not move? There we go. Let me re-download this again. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. I'm just gonna move this to my desktop. Okay, now we should have it here. Cool. Um, so, oh, it did move. Oh, that's funny. All right, well, we're gonna remove the one that I just downloaded. Okay, and then that looks good. So we have the SF Airbnb.csv. So that's what we downloaded. So I'm gonna go get rid of this. And so now when we open this up, um, let's see, SF. I'm gonna open this up in VS Code. Uh, don't show again. Okay, so we have like the first column, we have the first line, I guess, where we have the column names here. And you can kind of see what things are looking like a little bit more clearly and what's a string type and, and or what's not a string type. And then you can also probably copy, if you wanted to create a table, you can probably copy this column name and then you can put it in a doc and then you can start writing the create table um, stuff over here uh, with, the, with the list of the column names. So I'm pretty sure everything should be a string here for the most part, or we can use um, text or varchar. Some might actually be ints too. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see what we can find out over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna see, actually I can just probably open up another doc here. Actually, let me go ahead and do that. File, new file. And I'm just gonna paste the column name here. And so what we really want to do on the MySQL stuff is that we want to create table. 
I'm gonna call it SF Airbnb. And then we can start writing this. So this is gonna be our primary key um, over here. So we want this to be the primary key. So I'm gonna do ID, we'll just do um, ID and put 10 just in case. And then we're gonna do unsigned primary key. Cool. And we'll use that as our primary key here. And then next we have listing URL, which should be a which should be like a kind of like a text, because usually those can be pretty long. Uh, I'm gonna just hit enter after every comma, so it's just easier. To kind of read. So the scrape ID should be, let's see if we can go like with this. We have the ID, we have the listing URL. Looks like this is the scrape ID. Summary. Oh no, this should be Oh, the scrape ID, here we go. There we go, comma, okay, yeah. And then what is this? Looks like this should be a string too. So we can do, um, I'll just put text for this too. Last scraped. Should be that looks like a string too, or is it just uh yeah this these look like they're all strings. Pretty sure everything should be a string here. Everything that I'm looking at really quick should be a string. Yeah, I think everything is kind of like a string. So we can just do text, or I can just do bar char. Uh, two, four, six, we'll put 10 just in case. Uh, name should also be bar char. Honey, summary should be a text. So we could do long. So we have space, that's next. Um, that should be, oh, actually let me spell that, text. Description should be text. Um, also like, because I'm on the free version of MySQL, if it exceeds some sort of, I think what's some sort of limit, uh, every, it will fail. So sometimes you'll have to, you can't use varchar too often or too much because then it'll take up too much stuff for MySQL do text neighborhood overview can probably be a text notes can be a text transit oh, actually let's go back all right transit um what did transit look like Uh oh, what am I doing? There we go. Transit. That looks like it should be a text too. Yeah, I, mean, I think these can be really long. Text. We can actually look also here. Um, yeah, we can go actually, what am I doing? We can go through this pretty easily and look through here too. So let's go back, we're in transit. Um, where is it? Okay, transit, yeah, text, for sure. Uh, going back to here, we'll do that as text. The next one is access, that looks like it's a text. 
So we'll type in text over here. So I'll just type in that. Next is interaction. Um, definitely text. House rules. Definitely text. Thumbnail URL, that should be a text. Oh. Medium URL should also be a text. Picture URL should be a text. All these are URLs, so I don't need to look twice on this one. Um, X picture URL should be text. So now that we have this, let me go ahead, um, host ID. Let's see what that, so we have interaction house rules, the URLs, picture URL, host ID. This says it's an integer. I don't really trust it, but it looks like it should be an integer. Okay, we'll just put int for this. Let's go back to here. Host URL should be text. Host name should probably be varchar. Let's see what host name is. Host URL, host name. Yeah, we can just put something there. Let's see. Oh, but there's also like and Tanya. So it, I think it could be like a couple things. So let's go back here. We can do varchar. And I'll just put 30 for now. Host sense. Uh, it says date. But I don't really trust that. So let's see. Yeah, this is really hard to see. Uh, we'll put date for now. And if it's wrong, then we'll just change it later. Actually, no, it should probably be a string too. It should be a string. Um, so I'll just put bar char, um, uh, let's see, 10. Oops. And we have host location. That's a text. Host about should be a text. Host response time. So host location, host about, host response time. Oh, this should be a text. Host response rates. like to be a string I'll just put like five host acceptance rate uh, I'll just put I'll just put text for now because there's nothing I could see just in case host is super host sounds like this should be a boolean. Yeah, boolean. So let's go back to here. And 
hands. But I think I think everything in here should be a string. But we'll just put that as a string for now. Going back here. So we'll just do that. Martar five. We have the URL, it's a text. Host picture URL should be a text. Host neighborhood. Text, host listing count. Put int and host listing has count as an int. So let's go back here. So this should be text. Host listing count should be an int. Host total listing count and should also be an int. Host verification um, text. So we're just going through this data right now. Host has profile pick. We'll do var char. Five. I'm just going to copy that and just put that here. Host identity verified sounds like it should be the same. And then street should be text. Neighborhood should be. I'm just going to do two, three, four. Or I really like I can do bar chart for those. Let's go back here. I'll just do bar char. Um, fifty. Same thing over here. For neighborhood. Cleansed uh, neighborhood group cleanse. That's another one. No data. You can probably just put the same thing. City. And then state. And then zip code. Zip code is also a string. So going back here. City, you can do bar char. State, you can also do that, except state should be um, probably just two. And then zip code, um, should be a five. And then we have markets. And then smart location, that should be text. So market. Be bar char and then smart location. I'll just put text for now. Then we have the country code and then the country and then the latitude, longitude. I think these are also strings. The latitude and longitude should be strings. So country code should be two. Oh, yeah, country. Yeah. Do bar char. I'll just put fifteen here. And then we have latitude, longitude. These should be the same. Um, three, six. So we'll do string. Put ten just in case. All right. Is location exact? We have 
boolean this should be um, a string two so we'll do five we have property type apartment house Why is this? Oh, I have a capital. I'll just put text because this can probably be long. Room type, same thing. Combinates. That's an int. Bathroom. That should be a string. Bedroom. And beds. Accommodates was an int. I think that was plural. Yes. Um, which is a five. And we have bedrooms. Beds, bed type, amenities, square feet. This is a long one. Holy, such a long one. All right. So, beds, I think these should all be ints, ints. I think it's just an a string. And if it's wrong, we'll just change it later. Oh, bedrooms, yeah. Our bedrooms was in, no, decimal, yeah. Bed type, we can do, oh, bed type, that's blue text, amenities, Text, square feet, and price, um, we'll just do feet, weekly price. We'll do, actually, I'll just put 10 for everything. Monthly price and security deposit should be the same. Cleaning fee. All right, let's go that really quick. And that should be fine, security deposit. And then cleaning fee. And now we have guest included, that's an int. So we're just going through this. Extra people. Oh, this is a price per extra person. Or, yeah, an extra person. Minimum nights. Um... Int, maximum nights, int, minimum, minimum nights, int, maximum, minimum nights, int, minimum, maximum, int, um, minimum nights average, decimal. So let's go back here. I'll just put int here. So we have ints here again. Ma maximum minimum nights was an ints. Minimum maximum nights. Maximum minimum nights. And then um, average. I think this was, we'll call this bar char. Maximum, minimum, 
maximum nights average. Let's see. Calendar updated. We'll call this text. Has availability bar chart and availability 30. And then 60 and then 90 and then 365. Okay. And we have has availability. Um, we call that, yes, bar char. And availability 30. Yeah, 30, 60, 90, do the same thing. And then 365, availability 365. Calendar last scrape, that should be a string. I don't think that's a date. Number of reviews is an int. Uh, number of reviews, we'll put that as an int. Number, oh, I don't know why that did that. Number of reviews, LTM, there we go. That should also be an int. First review should be bar char. And then last reviewed should probably be that same thing. Oh, let's go back here. Review score rating. Integer, integer to an int, int, communication, int, int. And then also looks like all the score values should be an int. And then requires license is where it becomes back to bar char. So we'll just do int for all of these. So review score rating, review accuracy. Oh, hey, we're uh, going through, sorry, I'm just seeing this. We're going through um, uh, some data that we're gonna upload on uh, MySQL. And we're gonna be uh, writing some queries. Uh, we're gonna be indexing MySQL using Rockset to write um, some analytical queries. So. The idea, the goal here is to kind of work with MySQL data, and then when we update the data table on MySQL, we'll see the update on Rockset, um, and then we can create an API endpoint on the queries we write. So basically, we're just working through um, how to do real-time analytical workload on MySQL. That's what we're doing. Um, so I just shared the data set that we're working with right now, um, and I'm just going through the columns right now so we can create our table and then we're going to upload the Airbnb da data to MySQL. And then we're going to be working um, with Amazon. We're using the MySQL RDS on AWS. And so we're going to be working how to, how to get that all going. And then at the end, um, I think we're going to work on you know, writing some queries and, and, and just uh, making an API endpoint to it. So uh, where, uh, have you worked with MySQL before? I think this is by Pilsper, if I'm pronouncing this right. Um, so if I go over here, and so the data is coming in from here, so we're just going through the columns really quickly. Um, so if I go through here, uh, cleanliness should be an int. Check-in should be an int. Review score communications. I think that was 
Oh yeah, int, the last, the next three are ints. Um, requires license, that should be varchar. Oh wait, what did I do? Oh, there we go. Required license. And then we have license. Jurisdiction names. Instant clickable. Is business ready to travel? I think we're almost done with this. This is so long. Hopefully we don't, uh, yeah, we're almost done with this. I'm just gonna get this going and then we're gonna wrap this up so we can start uploading the data. So I'm just getting this ready. Oh, cool, that's it. So we only have a few more left to do. So we have requires license, license, looks like it should be a text. Uh, jurisdiction, we do text, instant bookable, should be bar char. Um, is business ready should also probably be the bar char. Cancellation policy should be a text and then requires guest profile picture should be bar char. So we'll put text over here. Bar char. Requires guest phone verification. That's the same. This should be an int. So we'll do bar chart here. This should be an int. And then count entries home. This should probably all be ints as well. Yeah. Int. Int. Reviews for a month. I think that's a. Uh, cool. I think that's it. We're done with this. So we've got. Our, our table columns all ready to go. Um, and we'll just do five. Okay. So that was quite a bit. So we have, we just got through the columns and we uh, created our column stuff with everything set to go. So this is what we'll put in to when we want to create our MySQL. Um, table. So if I go over here now, I need to connect to the table that we created last week. And so if we go back to the console here, we created our uh, MySQL database last week and we this is the endpoint um, that we that we got back. Um, you can go under con connectivity and security and you can get your endpoint. So I'm just going to go back to VS Code. I'm just going to write, copy the endpoint here. And then um, we want to we want to basically connect to our, uh, our instance over here. So to do that, we can write, um, I think uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna, I'm gonna type it over here and then I'm gonna write it in the in the terminal over here. So our um, our username is admin, and then minus p dash h, and then we can put the host the name over here, which is this, um, and then so this is the um, let's put it down command line. Um, uh, command line uh, to connect to our database, or I should say our, our MySQL database. 
So I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this sheet as like my working sheet where I'll just type some a lot of things in so I can kind of easily reference it. If I go back to terminal and I can um, let's clear that. I now I'm gonna put the password that I created. Yep. Well, when I created the instance, you had to set the password. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the password here. And now we're in our uh, MySQL database that we created uh, uh, last week. And so now what we want to do is we want to we want to connect. We want to use the um, kind of the table or the schema that we created. So I forgot what I did with that. I'm trying to look back in my notes on what I created. Um, let me see if I remember. Because I made notes last week on what we did. And I don't remember off the top of my head. Actually, let me go back to this. This should be here, actually. We have the endpoint configurations, maybe. Uh, the instance is, oh yeah, the database name is Rockset Switch Twitch database name. Very descriptive. So if I go back here, I can say use this. And now, yeah, so now we are using the right uh, database that we created. So now what I can do here is I should be able to copy this now. And I hope there's no mistakes. There might be a mistake, in which case we'll, we'll just correct it. And that we created here. And we're going to go ahead and create our table. Actually, let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, this should be fine. Let's see if we'll get an error. So I'm calling the table create SF Airbnb. I'm gonna copy this. Cool, that worked. And again, if like there's a mistake, you can just edit this doc pretty easily um, and um, make the changes instead of retyping it back into the console. So now that we created our, uh, our table, we now need to upload the data uh, to the database. So to do that, we need to, there's two ways to do it. You can do it with MySQL import to upload data, or you can just do it directly into, um, you can just write the command directly into MySQL. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to do it directly in. So I'll uh, type it over here. And then I'm going to share this in a blog too, so don't worry. You don't need to like remember all of this. So I think it's, I'm going to just type it in there and I'm going to type it back in so we can come back and fix it if there's a mistake. So it's load data local in file, and then I'm going to put my path um, slash user slash Nadine slash desktop. And then I called this SF Airbnb. So typically, the reason why I renamed the file uh, SF Airbnb, and I'm also creating the table SF Airbnb, because for MySQL, if you whatever is the prefix to the CSV, that's what the table that's the table that's going to get created. So you just want to make sure you're consistent on that. Okay, and then um, and then we're going to write into um, table SF Airbnb copy that and then because it's a CSV file it's going to be fields terminated by comma um, and then we're going to enclose by quotes and then lines terminated by n and then ignore we're going to ignore the column the the header rule basically and this should work. So let's go ahead. Actually, I'm gonna save this really quick. Um, live Twitch stream 0429 um, doc dot. I'm just gonna write txt and I'll just save it in my desktop for now. Cool. 
So now I'm going to type it in here uh, so I can actually read it. Okay. So load data local in file. And you don't want to copy and paste this part because there could be like um, some characters and stuff that could get inserted. I think it's like Unicode. So we don't want that. Desktop slash SF Airbnb dot C. Oh, it's not CVS. CSV. What am I thinking? CSV. Um, CSV. Cool. And file. That looks good. Into table SF Airbnb. That's fine. Uh, fields terminated by the comma and close by the quotes. Lines terminated by n and ignore one rows. Uh oh, did something happen? Oh, that did not like that. Something. Oh, maybe I forgot. Hold on. Let me get rid of this again. I think I did something wrong. I typed something wrong. Let me go ahead and get my password again. We're going to try this again. OK. Load. I'm going to type this again. Load data local in file slash users needing I spelled that wrong users needing desktop SF Airbnb dot CSV okay into table SF Airbnb fields terminated by comma uh, and closed by Lines terminated by uh, and back back. All right, ignore one rows. Oh, no data. Oh, I have to. S oh, man. I forgot to switch the database. Um, okay, let's try this again. Use, um, yeah, there we go. Rocks at Twitch database name. All that for nothing. Oh, let's try this again. Third time's a charm. Load data local and file. Users needing desktop. I should like have this memorized by now. I've done it three times already. SF Air BNB dot CSV. Okay. Good here. Uh, into table SF Air BNB. Um, fields terminated by the comma and closed by quotation marks. Lines terminated by. Um, break and then ignore the first row. Cross your fingers. Does that work? I think it's going. Cool. Uh, this looks good. It looks like uh, everything was loaded fine. There's some warnings. We'll take a look at that later. Um, all right. So now if I select star from SF Air B and B limit two. Oh, did I do that? Oh, I have wrong. Oh, oh, sorry. Ooh, for Airbnb. Uh, from Airbnb, SF Airbnb. Okay, select star. 
Um, cool, this looks good. So we're getting the data back. So yeah, the reason why we didn't create like an auto increment ID is because the SF uh, Airb the CSV uh, CSV file. I'm always saying thinking CVS CSV file uh, already has the ID, so it's fine. We can just set that as the ID. So this looks good. So this is how you can um, check to see um, how if everything's fine, and then you can also describe SF Airbnb, which is a table name. Oh, that's weird. Let's try this. Uh, describe SF Airbnb. Uh, oh, did I, oh, I spelled it wrong. Airbnb. There you go. And now you can see um, all the columns listed and stuff. So all the field names, basically. Cool. Ooh, that took just a little bit to do. That was, what, an hour? Yeah, this takes time. This does take time. Um, but I will say, if you wanted to work with the data set, I'm going to probably post this on um, our community GitHub. And I'll post the commands and stuff that I'm doing that you can try as well. So I've seen a local in file, and I've also seen some people just write it different ways. So just make sure you have, you're using the right command for what you're set up for. OK, so now that we have the data, if we go under databases, and we go under uh, MySQL Twitch instance, um, this should look pretty good. And if we go under monitoring, we should be able to see some stuff over here. So we have like the, what's going on, the data, and then we have logs and events over here. So if there's an error and stuff, we should be able to see that over here. And then we have configurations and, and stuff. So this looks pretty good. So now that we have kind of data already uploaded and stuff, basically we wanna go ahead and start creating um, a kinesis, a new kinesis stream. So the one that we created, the kinesis stream that we created uh, last week was just for like a sh to show like when we uploaded data, we created a sample table on MySQL and then uh, we had the end, the end source point or the end point uh, be a kinesis stream where we're connecting that. So now that we're creating a new table, we wanna create a new kinesis stream. Um, so, uh, and typically you wanna connect like one kinesis stream. Uh, when you create a table, you wanna create a kinesis stream and then you'll create um, a new integration on Rockside to connect to the Kinesis stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into Kinesis now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new stream for the new table that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Data Streams, um, and create Data Streams over here. And then I'm just gonna call this SF Airbnb uh, Kinesis stream. Okay, and then I'll put Twitch. And then I'm just gonna put 10 shards because we don't, it should be fine. Um, we don't have that much data that we're uploading. And we're gonna go ahead and create the data stream. So now if we go under this, this is the new stream that we're gonna create it, which will be our end, our end point. Um, which will connect to Rockset, which will send data to Rockset. So we're gonna, I'm gonna leave this up here because we're gonna need the ARN later on. So I'm just gonna copy this, oh. I'm just gonna copy this over here. There we go. And uh, what did I do? There we go. I just wanna copy this so I can have another AWS tab open. And so now that we created the Kinesis stream, we can go into uh, the data migration service here and we're going to create a new endpoint and a new replication a new migration task so let's go ahead and go to endpoints so you'll see that we have we created the we did one last week yeah we did the source endpoint um, and the twitch mysql target endpoint so the source endpoint here won't change because we're still using uh, the same uh, database that we created last week, we're just adding a new table. So the only thing that we're going to really create is a new endpoint, which is gonna connect to the new Kinesis stream. So if I go ahead and go ahead and create endpoint, the source endpoint, we're gonna use what we did last week, but we're gonna create a new en target endpoint. So I'm gonna put the identifier here and I'm gonna put Twitch 
SF Airbnb um, endpoints. Um, I'll put Twitch. Airbnb. Okay, cool. And then the target engine should be Kinesis. Because now we're, uh, we created a new table, we're going to send it to Kinesis. So now the, a the Kinesis stream ARN, that will come from here. So I'm just going to copy that and put that over here. Um, and now it's asking for the role ARN. This is, uh, this is a specific policy that we actually created last week as well. And we're just going to use it again. Let me see if I can pull that up because we did that last week. I don't remember what we named it. Um, but if I go into the IM policy, I can probably pull it up. One second. I'm just looking through what we named it last week. Uh, uh, let's see. I think this is the link that I have from last time. I'm pretty sure we might be able to use that. Let's see. So basically, this is uh, an I, a role that we created in order on behalf of the data migration service just to give the permissions that uh, doesn't limit the permissions and stuff. So if I click on this, actually, this is I'm pretty sure we might be able to use this. Yeah, this is just setting the permission stuff. So be sure that when you create your source endpoint that you set the uh, you set the right role for the data migration service that you want to do. In this case, I just allowed all access, um, Amazon full uh, Kinesis full access. This just popped up on the policy when we when I created the role. I think this is the one that we did. Um, so let's see if we can copy this ARN here. And I'm pretty sure we might be able to use it in here. Okay. And then we don't need to worry about tags. And then we can just test the endpoint over here. Here, I'm just using what I did last week. I just used the default, default VPC. Please pick the VPC for whatever you need. And we are using this the one the replication instant that we created last week was the replication instance which i misspelled this i meant to put my sql i just put mql oh well um so i'm going to go ahead and run the, ins the run the test to make sure the endpoint is working and then if it works we'll create the endpoint Cool. So this was successful. If this failed, then I would have to debug what was going on, if it was the wrong policy or the service role or whatever the case may be. But it looks like this is right. So just make sure you set the right policy on here when you create the, you allow the data migration services to call AWS services on your behalf. So that's what we're just doing here. I'm just giving full access on this case. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create the endpoint. And let me go ahead and just put this in, I'm gonna put this in here. So endpoint created for um, SF Airbnb, we call this. Yeah, and I'm just gonna put the, well, I already know where it's at, so it's fine. Um, cool, so now we have what we did. We have endpoints, the replication instances shouldn't change but we need to create a new uh, database migration task. So let's go ahead and recap what we did on the replication instance. Um, actually, let me go ahead, let me just create a new one really quick. I'm gonna see what we did last week. Okay, yeah, we don't we don't we, we don't need to do another replication. Uh, we can just use the one that we created last week. So let's go ahead and go to the migration task and let's go ahead and create a task. So now we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to create a task where we'll connect um, we'll put in our source database or our source our source endpoint which is the my um, 
uh, basically what we did last week. And then the target database endpoint is the one we just created, which is the SF Airbnb endpoint. And then um, we're gonna we're gonna put this as migrating existing data and replicate ongoing changes. This means that if um, if anything changes on the MySQL end, so if we add data or anything changes, um, it, will it will take in those changes and update the Kinesis stream and then update, um, um, in the end, update Rockset. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this SF Airbnb migration task. Um, and I'll put Twitch. And then I'm gonna put the replication instance, which is um, this one over here the Twitch, the one I misspelled from last week. The source endpoint would be um, the source endpoint we created, which was uh, Twitch MySQL source endpoint. And the target endpoint is the one we just created, which is Airbnb endpoint two. Oh no, is that it? No, that's not what we created. SF Airbnb endpoint Twitch, that's, what, that's the one we just created. And make sure we set the migration tap as existing data and replicating ongoing changes. And this is just telling you that we need to set the, the row. So last week, we I think we changed bin log format or something instead of being mixed to being a row to have rows. So this is already set when we did this last week. So we don't need to worry about that. Now, if we go to the JSON editor, it gives us um, some things we need to edit. So if we go to docs really quick, docs.rockset.com, and we go to loading your data and we hit MySQL, there, there are a couple of suggestions that we're, we can kind of edit over here and it tells us that you can configure these values um, if you're working with a large table the default la values are zero but i'm just going to set the threads and the buffer size to these values just in case so parallel flow threads here we go that should be 32 buffer size should be a thousand fetch enabled we want oops that was p all oh. right that was enough siri all right, uh, we have parallel apply threads, it should be 32. The buffer size should be 1,000. And apply queues per thread, that should be one. Apply thread, so I think that's right. Let's go back and docs really quick. And um, 32,001, yeah, this looks really great. Um, So that looks fine. And in it, we go back to the bottom now we can um, go ahead and set the table mappings so we want to use add new selection rule and we're just going to enter our schema name and the schema name was this i think it was did i not type it this in ah uh, let's go back to data stream, data migration services. Ah, um, one second, I gotta find, let's go ahead and go to, I'm gonna copy this and just go back to the database because I literally just forgot. There's like so much going on. Let's go back to RDS. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get the database name. I think it was Twitch MySQL something. But I just wanna make I just wanna make sure because I don't want to get it wrong. So MySQL Twitch instance should be under configuration. And this I think this is what we want. There we go. Rockset Twitch database name. That's what it was. Okay. So if I go back to the data migration service, oops. Sounds like this is kind of freezing at the moment. We can just put that name in the schema name. And then the table name is actually SF uh, Airbnb. I think that's what we did. Um, yes, SF Airbnb. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And we're gonna do actions include. We don't need to do any transformation rules. Automatically create and then tags. So yeah, everything looks fine here now. So we're just creating a, a new migration tax because we're adding a new endpoint um, for the new table that we created. Um, so this looks good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create the task. 
And then this should take like a minute or two, and then we should be good. So let's see. So it's still creating over here. So we just want to see this green and then we should be good to go. So I'm just going to wait until this shows up. So this might take a couple of minutes. Usually it'll take like a few minutes before it's able to get going. Cool. So now that it says load complete and replication ongoing, um, things are working. So if I click on this again now, we go to table statistics, we should see um, the full load rows is 75, around 7,500, so that looks fine. So this is just showing that it's showing that the data is coming in um, and everything is uploaded just fine. So now, kind of the next step from here is to uh, see if we can see it on the rocks at end. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to the console. So when you log in the console, you can go to uh, catalog sources, and then there's the po you, Postgres. Sorry, there's the MySQL that we want, and you can go ahead and create a collection from MySQL. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a create a new integration for the SF. Airbnb data that we created, and we're using RDS MySQL from AWS. So click continue. Um, we already did the server configuration from last week. We created a new Canoe stream because we created a new table. We just did the data migration service, and we can continue to the uh, Kinesis integration. So I'm going to call this um, SF Airbnb um, Twitch. And I'll just put the date 0429. Um, and then this is just saying uh, that we're going to have to navigate to the IAM services on the AWS Management Console. We're going to get to the policy section, and we just need to update the policy. So, uh, OK, so just make sure that when you're um, creating your policy that you don't just blindly copy and paste, because then um, what will happen is that you'll have this left over your stream and um, you will not get data. It will, the, the, it will not load. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this um, and create a new IAM policy. Um, and I think actually maybe we can actually, I wonder what policy, we can just probably edit the policy. Well, no, we created the new table. I'll just go ahead and create a new policy. So we'll go ahead and create a new policy, choose service. Um, it should be Kinesis. And then we want to do the JSON. I'm just going to delete that and put that in here. And our stream name is the stream that we created, which was this. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm a big copy and paste person on this part just because I tend to just 
sometimes misspell stuff. Just like my security blanket. Um, SF, Airbnb, Kinesis, Stream, Twitch. That looks good. And then I think it said that you have to do it on Kinesis. Yeah, Kinesis Stream. Yeah, that's fine. Everything looks good. Okay, so we're going to click Next Tags. We don't need that. So we're going to review. And then the review, the policy, the policy name would be SF Airbnb policy for Twitch. And then I'm going to copy that in here. So just in case we want to do something, um, I'll put policy created for Rockset integration on IAM AWS. I should just write AWS IAM. Okay, cool. That looks good. Um, actually, I can just copy that. I'll put the description here. All right. Um, summary, that's fine. So create policy. Okay. So then what we need to do is we need to create a role with that policy in. So I'm going to create a new role um, and it's going to be another AWS account. So if we go to the console now, we're going to add the account ID over here. So this might seem familiar because we've done this before. Oh, actually, let me go back. I made a mistake. We need to add the external um, require external ID. So now we're going to go back to the console and get the external ID over here. And we're gonna paste that in here. And then we're gonna hit next permissions. And then we're gonna type in the policy that we just created, which is this, that's why I copied it. And we can just find it. And then I'm gonna click that. And then we're gonna hit next tags. We don't need that, we're gonna review it. Um, and I'm gonna write SF Airbnb role um, for Twitch. Yeah, it's fine. And enroll for policy, rocks and integration, live on Twitch. All right, copy the role name just in case so I have that as a backup because there's, I work with this so many times, there's so many names here and it's just helpful for me to come back to it when I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the role. So now that we created the role, we'll be able to get the ARN from here that we can actually paste on Rockset that has the right policy now for the, for, the, for the Kinesis stream. So now we're gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna copy this here too. So this is the AWS side. This is the Rockset side. This is the integration that we created, okay. Um, cool. This looks good. Looks really good. Now let's see if this works. I'm going to save it. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on the SF Airbnb integrations, which is what we just created and click start. And now we're going to start with the collection name. So I'm going to put, put in SF Airbnb, um, collection name. There you go super descriptive and creative here i'm telling you all right so the aws region that i've been using is us west 2 the primary key that i created was id and if we go back we can get the stream name from here and we can just copy that and we can paste it over here on the kinesis stream and you have to uh yeah my sql id Okay, that looks good. Um, we're not gonna do any field mappings just yet. So let's go ahead and create this. This will might take like a couple minutes to create, but as you see, it's um, a lot of the heavy lifting is usually done on the AWS side. But after that, it's, it's the integration is really easy. 
And it wasn't, yeah, we just basically created a new Kinesis stream, created a new endpoint because we created a new Kinesis stream, um, created a new data migration, database migration task because we have a new end, end source that, we're, that we want to connect to. And then what we're doing is we're connecting the Kinesis stream to Rockset. So the data from the Kinesis stream will kind of dump the data into Rockset and then we'll be able to write our queries from there. So this might take just a couple of minutes to, to get through. All right. So this is cool. So this now we're seeing the data show up. So as you see, uh, we have the fields that were the fields listed over here, and we can see the type of data that they are, which we know what they are because we created it. We defined the schema on the MySQL end, and now everything is loading up pretty nicely over here. So we have streets. We have yeah, everything is lining up really nicely. Cool. Okay, so now we can actually start querying this collection. So if we want to see what certain things are looking like, we can just, I'm going to clean this up so we can start writing some queries over here. All right, so if I select this and limit to 10, we can see what the JSON looks like. Um, and what everything is kind of looking like. So it looks like everything is looking pretty good. All right. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at pricing. So it sounds like this is, it looks, because a lot of this is actually um, SF Airbnb. Oh, no wonder everything was SF. For a minute I was like, why is everything on the Airbnb listing from SF. Well, because it's SF Airbnb listing, duh. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at price, because I think that's always a hot topic with San Francisco. Select price. Um, um, from the Airbnb collection, okay. So it looks like, you know, we created, this was a string for sure. And it looks like there's an extra space too. All right, cool. So now that we have what price is, if we wanted to say like, let's say if we wanted to take a look and if we're not sure, actually, let me take a step back because I, I like not making too much assumption, especially when you're working. In this case, we know what the schema is because we created the, the schema, like we created the columns ourselves based on the data from the CSV. But as a double checker, if you're working with like a NoSQL database or something and you're not sure what type of data something is, you can do type of price or type of, you know, whatever you want to evaluate. And then you can put, um, I'm going to limit one here. And you can put and you can see the, what type of object you're getting back. And again, if we go to the docs really quick and um, I type in type of, You'll see what that looks like over here. It's pretty familiar, even if you're working with a lot of coding languages, there's always a type or type of something that pops up if you want to see the type of object that you're working with. So it's it shouldn't be too it shouldn't be too um should be you should be it should be familiar, a little bit familiar. So if I go to type of we can see what the what the what we're getting back. And I'm just doing this because this is just really good practice to know, uh, especially when you're working with schemaless data. Okay. So 
you know, if you if you didn't know, uh, so now that we know that we're that we're getting a string back, if we tried casting the string into a float, um, for example, we'll get an error back because, well, actually, we'll not get an error back. We'll get we'll get a null type back. So if I do select try cast, and if you've been to a couple of my Twitch streams already, you probably type up and try cast. I have probably used in every single instance that I've worked in this console so far. I like try cast because it doesn't fail. For my cases that for this Twitch stream, we don't need it to fail. Um, but if you did cast price as float, it will, it will error out as opposed to just returning a null type. Um, and and I just want to show you again here, limit one, that if we try doing that, we'll get we'll get a null type back. And then um this floats. And then just to recap over here, I think I did this last week or maybe two weeks ago. If we did cast price as float. Um, uh oh, what am I doing? Zooming in and out, uh, we'll get an error, right? So these are the big differences. It depends on what your requirements are. So, so if we really need to kind of cast this price as a float, the one thing that we really need to get rid of is that dollar sign. That dollar sign. We want it. We just want integers or decimals or floats to work with. We don't really want um, a character like the dollar sign in that. So. What we really need to do is we need to kind of get rid of that dollar sign. So there's there's a couple of ways that we can do this. And I feel like in all of my Twitch streams, I've always been like working with like rejects. For some reason, it's like rejects replace or rejects like or rejects something. I'm just a, like a heavy user of the rejects stuff for some reason. Um, and I think we're going to need to use rejects here because I don't know another way to get rid of it. So if I go into rejects, there's rejects, replace. We don't need to do split. Like is just like something that you want to search through something. And then there's extract all and extract. So if we go to extract, um, extract returns the first match of a pattern in string or null if the pattern does not match. Um, and if a group is specified greater than zero, returns the group that's capturing. Um, basically, it's just if you've used rejects before, this should be pretty familiar. So if I, you know, if I want to extract something, I can just take that, take extract whatever, return whatever I'm trying to extract, basically. And so it takes in a string, a pattern, and then optionally you can specify a group. So one way that we can kind of get rid of this dollar sign is. Let me type in, let's get rid of the dollar sign. Well, actually, why am I doing that? I can just type in that. Okay, so there's two ways that we can do it. We can do it with rejects replace or rejects extract. Um, I'm spelling this wrong. R E G. R E G E X P. I'm just going to copy that. And then there's the other one is rejects replace. Okay. So if I did, if I did um, select and let's say if I wanted to replace, actually, let's start with that. Because I we've used replace before. This isn't the first time that we're using it. Um, but if we use extract, that would be the first time that we're using it. Um, we can just type in a literal string. In this case, we can just provide an example here. Um, how it's how it's shown over here, and then I can just put that over here. And we can type in um, kind of the rejects to kind of do that. So I don't remember off the top of my head. How to kind of do that? I know there's like D for digits. Let's look it up. Uh, rejects uh, digits. Something. There should be like. There should be. Um, I feel like rejects expression. I don't want a tutorial. I just need to look up some of the rejects stuff. There should be. Um, 
gosh. Oh, maybe it's the cheat sheet one. Let's see. I just need a listing of some of the stuff because I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, no. What is there's one there was one site that I remembered. Um, no, not tutorial point. I feel like there's there's a site that you can try writing rejects and then it shows you whether it's working or not. That's the one that I want. Um, no. Um, I don't know, write reject. There's some site that you can write in. I'm forgetting the name right now. I'm like totally blanking out. Write rejects editor. Or maybe I can just write rejects editor. Maybe rejects editor. There should be something. Uh, build test debug. I think this is what I wanted. Yes, this is what I wanted. Rejects 101. I'll um, put that over here on this too so I can come up include that in my blog as well okay this is what I was looking for this uh, there should be um, common token single character I know there's something with D for digits there we go any digit perfect this is what I wanted I just wanted the um, okay so we're gonna put our uh, test string here actually I can just copy it from the console because that's what we want so if you're not sure what the rejects is, you can just kind of start from here. And I, I kind of like this site because I can just play with it pretty easily and go through kind of the docs and then just kind of work from with it over there. So what we really want is we want slash D. I know that. Um, I wonder if there's the... Yeah, it matches any decimal digit equivalent of zero nine. Um, any non-digit now. Capture everything zero. I'm just going through this really quickly. Start of the string. Yes. End of the string. So we want the start of the string, right? Because if we go back here, at the start of the string, we want the 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 digits. Um. So we want the start of the string here. Uh, and then we have boundaries. We don't need to worry about boundaries. One or more. Let's see. It's not matching. Let's go ahead and go back here. So we have zero, a star, a question mark, a character, let's see, single character, uh, matches any character except for A, B, or C. Oh, cool. Let me show you the example here, too, which is really awesome. Okay. Um, matches any character between A and Z. Well, we do want matching on the range. Let's see if we can change this to... Actually, I don't want this. Let's go back here. Stay on that. Um, okay, cool. So we have matching. Oh, this is kind of coming out, right? So we, if we want to extract, we're just getting extracting these values that's we just want to extract the number really actually um all right uh dot matches any character other than new line or including the line terminators with the else flag matches any character so that's 
So anything that's not a digit. Let's see. Let's see where this takes us really quick. Well, this puts us Let's see, let me try this really quick. I go back to the console and I did that. Let me try with selects. Uh, I actually need to put this in quotation marks too, I think. There we go. Let's see, Ajax replace. I'm gonna put that over here. And then we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do here too. So let me go ahead and all right. I'm gonna comment this out really quick. I'm gonna put a colon here. So what is this complaining? Uh, fill two fifty not found. What? Oh, maybe it's the quotation mark. All right. This should work now. Oh, cool. So we have rejects replace and we get 250 back. Okay. And then I think if we just did, yeah, then we didn't need to do this because you could just re replace it with a, yeah, you don't need that. You can just do this and then we'll just get back the, the 250 back here. So we did it. So we did extract. I think I meant to start with extract. I don't know. Okay, let's go back here. And now if I paste this, and we have to change the quotation because it's complaining about it. It has to be single quotes. There we go. We'll get back the just the dollar sign. So they're kind of like, you can think of like rejax replace and rejax extract kind of like, maybe like inverses with yourself, like whatever you want to replace is if you put the same thing, it's what you're trying to extract. So there'll be different kind of rejects here, but we have the replace working the extract. Um, let's go back to that. So we got rid of this. This is good for replace. Now, if we want to extract it, let's go ahead and see. I think this is a plus sign, one or more characters. Um, that's not, that's not what we want. It's cause we did that, it'll be the same thing. Yeah, we don't want, it, it's not gonna make a difference. I'll have to come back to this. So I think we're running close to time. We'll come back and, and uh, we'll come back and play with this. So there's still a lot more to do with this, but we'll use rejects for place for now on, on this and I'll come back to extract uh, and work it out a little bit later. We'll work it out in the next stream. We'll kind of, we'll continue. There's so much to do with here cause there's a lot of, there's what over like a hundred fields or 107 Maybe just over a hundred columns. Yeah, it's there's so much to play with. So we'll, I'm gonna save this really quick. We're gonna come back and play with this. But let's wrap up this query that we want to work with. Um, here. So we're gonna use re rejects replace. So now that we are getting um two fifty back, uh, we can start and we can start writing our query. So then, if I, for example, now if I take this. Um, and I come back here and I do uh, try cast. Now you can try this. Um, we'll get back, if we do reject replace, we'll get back our, uh, we'll get rid of the dollar sign. We still return a string, right? We haven't gotten rid of that, but now we can try, try casting this as a float and we should be able to get something back over here. And now if you do type up on top of it, now you know you'll get back a float. 
like that. Uh-oh, why is my volume? There we go. And I can run that and you get back a float. So this is working here. So we'll do regex replace on where we get rid of the dollar sign. So now if you want to do aggregations where we want to um, average or, or count or anything like that, now that we're actually getting back a float type, we can, we can kind of do that now. And that's the whole reason why we are trying to get rid of the dollar sign basically is to be able to work with the numbers itself. And usually when you're working with strings and stuff, you're gonna, you might need to write rejects. In this case, we wrote our rejects to get rid of that dollar sign. So going back here now, um, if we wanted to uh, kind of see what the average prices for San Francisco are, we can kind of play with that now. And now the query should be a little bit easier to, to write because now I think this was the, the little bit more challenging part to write. So let's see um, the average uh, prices in SF. So if we do select um, average, and then I'm just going to copy what we wrote here. Oh, actually, I need a parentheses here. Try cast. And then here, instead of the 250, I'm going to put in price. And this should be fine. Yeah, I'm just making sure the parentheses are fine. Okay, so average, and I'm going to cast this as average price. Um, and then from our collection name, which I'll put over here, I'm just going to copy that and paste that over here. Um, and now, remember, TriCast, when we use TriCast, um, we'll, uh, can return a null if something is not written correctly or if it's if something is not the right type. So we can kind of write where um, TriCast um, uh, we can do rejects replace price, probably write all of this in. Actually, I can just copy this again. Um, is not null. Oh, I gotta get rid of the extra break, yes. Um, let's see. Let's see what we get back here. Let's actually try running this query. So now we get the average price uh, of what this data has. And I'm assuming everything is from San Francisco. So if we go back to um, select price from common, or actually we can actually look over here. We never really look here. We can kind of see what the fields are looking like. Let's let me get rid of this. And let's look at SF Airbnb collection name. And if I'm not sure like what the like the available fields are, I can just kind of look through here and I actually never really do this. I always just try running this and then I like looking at the JSON or actually writing this and then looking at the JSON. But you can also you can actually look on the left here and see what we can do. So there's a city field here. Um, we can look at the city. So where if we wanted to see the city, then we can see where um, TriCast this is not null and city uh, equals uh, San Francisco. And if we go back to the JSON here, there should be a city. I just hitting control F city. And now we're going to see it kind of populate over here. So it looks like San Francisco, we can just, we can just scale it for San Francisco. All right. And then if we really want it to be super, super like super user, we can write a rejex where something is rejex like, and then you can put all the variations of how someone can write San Francisco. Um, but for this case right now, since we're running close to time, we can just write that. Uh, and then you can see that the price doesn't really change. 
Um, cool. And so now um, we'll come. We'll kind of come back. To, we'll kind of work on this more um, next week. But now that we have um, our query going for us, we can um, kind of just co copy. I'm going to create a, a new tab, and then we can just save it as a query lambda now. And we can just write in SF average price, um, and I'll put Twitch. And then what we're going to do is we're, uh, we're going to create a query lambda, which is basically like a wrapper around our SQL query um, that we can embed in our applications. And basically when we run our applications, um, the query lambda will be that's executed is like running your SQL query on Rockset. So it's just an API endpoint. So if I go ahead and create the lambda, um, I can go look at the SQL. I can kind of see what the SQL is looking like. I can look at the collections that I'm using. This is our first version of the query. So you can see the versions here. And um, if I go back down, we'll get our API endpoint here and then we'll get the curl command. So if I copy the command, um, so I know my API keys are showing, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'll update my API keys after this. So if I clear this and now I type this in, um, on our um, on the terminal, we should we'll get our data back, and now you can see um, the average price, and you can see the price information here. Um, but there's so much more that we can do with this data. Like one of the things that I, I that I see that we can automatically do is we can do field mappings. So as the data is coming in, we can transform the data. So in this case, like if we didn't want to write um, the rejects at runtime, where's the console? There it is. And we can go, let's go back and edit this query or edit this query Lambda. Uh, we can actually, we can write rejects to transform the fields as it's being ingested. So we don't have to write a query that looks like kind of very involved right now. Um, and this isn't, you know, this is, this is not even involved, but Every time you, you do rejects, you want to ask yourself if it's something that you can do um, as the data is uh, coming in, especially if you want to replace dollar signs or you want to format something to a certain way. Um, so when you actually write your queries, then if we transform the data while it's being ingested, we don't need to do all of this. We can just literally now at this point average price and get rid of all of this. And then the query becomes a little bit more readable uh, to work with. And especially if you're working with colleagues and staff, they may or may not know rejects um, or have to look things up. It just becomes so much more understanding when you're, especially when you're collaborating with other people. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this as a soft holding spot for where we're at today. We're gonna build on this next week and we're gonna work on more of like the number stuff, the pricing. We're gonna work a little bit with field mappings and we're uh, gonna continue working with the data. I mean, it took like what, an hour to get it into my SQL because we had to write um, we had to like write the schema basically for it. So um, next week we'll spend more time on the data, but I just wanted to kind of wrap up what we're working now and we'll, we'll pick this up next week and we'll just really focus on um, writing some queries. And if there's any good data sets that you think will be good for, uh, for me to use on the Twitch stream, especially for like joining data and things like that, feel free to sh share them on the Slack channel. Our Slack channel is listed on our Twitch page. Um, and if you have any other suggestions of things that you like to work at or something that you want me to do, um, feel free to, again, uh, make those recommendations on Slack on the Twitch channel, um, or you can find me on Twitter as well. So this is, this is it for, for um, this week, and I'll catch you next week where we'll be working um, with the same data, uh, where data is being, um, with, with the MySQL data that we're working with. So I'll see everyone next week. All right, take care. Bye.